Hey beautiful people, how y'all doing? Hopefully you guys are doing wonderful. If you're new to my channel, welcome. My name is Michelle and today I'm doing a video just talking about my relationship with sugar. I love sugar. I love it. Love is actually an understatement and it's something that has turned into a huge issue in my life. Um, not like in an emergency sense, but in a sense where I kind of like just woke up one day and thought, this is crazy. I need to stop. So I want to just kind of walk you through um, my history with sugar, what kind of things I do, why I feel like I need to stop. Um, I wouldn't say that I'm addicted to sugar. It's not an addiction at this point, but depends on who you ask. Depends on who you ask. <laughs> so growing up, I didn't eat a lot of sugar in the sense that like sugar wasn't available in the house. My mom was really cautious about how much sugar we had. So there was no soda in our house. There were no sugary drinks. When we went to birthday parties, we would have to like throw our candy, like put it on the floor. She would have us keep some and then she would take the rest away. Halloween, same thing. Like I always had to divide up my candy. Um, and so I really savored the sugar moments that I would get. And for me, it was just like what made my life happy. So when I was in school, I remember early, maybe like second, third grade, I remember there'd be kids at school selling candy, like their own personal candy that they were selling. And I had a little bit of money, so I would be everyone's number one customer. I would be buying M&M's, M&M's with peanuts in it, Skittles, Snickers, and I'm talking like three candy bars a day. I would go in. I would be in class sometimes, and I had this jacket, I remember. It was like one of those jackets that has the pockets on the inside and on the outside. I would put the M&M's in the pocket, and then like, what? <laughs> while the teacher was teaching I would take a couple out and I would like slide it in my mouth I mean it was crazy at a really young age I just loved sugar and once I was able to afford a little bit of it I just couldn't stop as I got older and obviously like started working and actually when I first started college when I went to the dorms I'm on my own now I could do whatever I want and there was like that university store I don't know what they call them like it's kind of like a, a convenience store but it's inside the dorms I would go every night and I would be up till like 2 a.m. eating ice cream because ice cream is my absolute favorite thing to eat in the whole world so I'd be up eating like all kinds of ice cream watching MTV and just living my best life like that for me was the perfect night and it was a problem I literally had a meal plan and I would spend so much of the money for my meal plan on that convenience store and then after of course when I started working a full-time job and earning real income when I went to the grocery store my freezer would have like popsicles ice cream sandwiches regular ice cream sherbet I kid you not I had it all and then let's not forget Starbucks when I was like getting ready to enter high school or maybe I had just started learning how to drive that's when it started like booming and I would go with my sister we would get caramel frappuccinos and we would load it we would always say extra 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 caramel it was so sweet and that became like a little mini sort of <laughs> addictive behavior going to Starbucks all the time and then there came a point in my life where I wasn't able to fit my clothes and I've always been a very slim girl. So as I was growing up, I was also growing wider. And I thought, oh, this is great. Like, this is just part of getting older. I'm getting my thick body. But the problem was all the fat or all the thickness was mostly in my stomach. And we know why. It was all the ice cream, all the candy, all the desserts I would eat, all of the Starbucks. And I would drink Coke. Oh, man. Now, Coke was a big problem. I would drink Coca-Cola maybe like two cans a day. You know, I mean, all of that sugar was building up in my stomach. So I went on a weight loss journey. And if you guys have been following me for a long time, then you know that there came a point in time where I made a video saying, oh my gosh, like what happened? I used to be skinny and all of a sudden I'm like struggling with my weight. So I started my weight loss, whatever, diet journey, whatever you want to call it, getting fit. My mentality shifted and I thought, okay, I need to get rid of this fat. According to my own standards, I've done a pretty remarkable job in that because it's caused me to take a lot of time out of my life to work out, um, spend a lot of time prepping my food differently just to lose the weight and to feel fit again. But the one thing I did not cut out was sugar. 
Now, I thought I was initially. I would still have like, you know, snacks and Oreos and stuff like that around, but I stopped going to the Cold Stone. I stopped eating so much ice cream, which was the hardest thing in the world for me, but I did. And what I started doing, because it gave me the ice cream sensation, was making smoothies. It's like, hey, you know, you're working out, you're making smoothies, they go hand in hand. So I would make smoothies with yogurt, and <laughs> I wanted my yogurt to taste like ice cream. So what I would do is I would get like the um, ice cube trays, and I would like feel them with the yogurt and I would freeze it so that when I put it in the smoothie it kind of like gives you an ice cream texture but what I didn't know was putting all that fruit putting all the juice or sweetened almond milk or whatever it was I was still drinking a ton of sugar now yes people say well it's better because it's coming from a fruit which is true it is better than added sugars when they add sugar to things however it's still it was still a lot of sugar I will put so much fruit so much yogurt um, I will put honey sometimes Nutella I will make it a whole thing and it would be super heavy super thick and super super sweet and I wasn't considering the fact that you know fruit sugars do metabolize differently than when you're like eating a fruit versus drinking it in a smoothie it's still a lot of sugar another thing that was pretty important that I wasn't paying enough attention to was alcohol now I'm not a big drinker it's not something that I enjoy doing however I do love wine but when I turned 21 or however old I was and I started like going out to adult events and they would serve alcohol I was constantly being asked what do you want to drink and I didn't know any drinks I still don't know any drinks and I would just tell the bartender just make it something sweet that's always what I would say make it something sweet so if I go out Friday Saturday Sunday and I am consuming three to four alcoholic beverages that's also a lot of sugar and that's something I wasn't factoring in so then one day I decided you know what I'm gonna just stop with the sugar I think it was a Lent a season of Lent where I gave up sugar it was going well I think I almost finished that Lent but I screwed up I couldn't do it and so when I was like really focusing on my weight loss I said I will stop eating sugar I'm gonna lower my standards and try it for one week and y'all I couldn't even get through a week I could not get through a week I remember going to bed one night and waking up in the middle of the night just like I need sugar and I thought where do I have candy or something and I started looking around for stuff and I realized I had gotten rid of everything so what did I do I ate my vitamin gummy bears I had, I had them. I really did because they're so sweet. They're delicious. I love my vitamins, but it's not meant to be eaten like candy. And that was a moment where I said, okay, you know what? This behavior right here is not okay. And for me, it wasn't even about the weight. It's just knowing that I couldn't stop doing something that I wanted to stop doing. And mentally, that just messed with me because I was thinking to myself, like, what if, God forbid, I had some sort of illness and I couldn't eat certain things? Like, I had to be disciplined. Would I be able to do it? Like, what if it was a situation that came up where I couldn't eat sugar? God forbid I ever got sick. But diabetes does run in my family, and I know that. I thought, you know, like, what would happen? Like, would I be able to stop? I think I would die because I can't stop. And that's when I decided, you know what? I'm going to have to make a commitment to myself. I know that I can do all things with God, number one. So I need to, like, pray about it, ask him to give me the strength, and help me to stop. Stop this thing. So I am making a change, you guys. I am making a change. I've told myself that moving forward, I'm only gonna allow myself one like very sugary dessert a week. So it could be like a milkshake, some kind of crazy dessert, whatever, but one. Because I do, and I always say, life is made for living. Like you do have to have balance. I'm not gonna go cold turkey like that. Um, I'll also allow myself like one coffee a week and a smoothie a day because I do work out and I do make my protein shakes and I do like having like fruit and stuff in it but I use water or like almond milk that has very little sugar but I do want to have like a little bit of sugar okay I'm not gonna just go from that extreme I just explained to perfection that's not realistic and I think because I'm not making like enough little baby steps that's why I feel like I keep failing and then the minute I fail I'm like well Chick-fil-A it is and I don't want to do that so I'm starting slow and that's sort of what I'm giving myself but to me it's just so baffling that sugar is such a big problem and we don't talk a lot about it because it's like it's that one like bad thing that's like cute and fun and like you know versus like alcohol people they hear oh alcohol like oh you shouldn't be doing that well sugar 
can screw you just like alcohol can screw you it's just but of course it's not deadly you know if mishandled in that kind of way but it has terrible effects if we're just talking about your body wise as alcohol and the only circles I hear the sugar conversations around are during Lent or like fitness people on YouTube people who are watching these videos because they want to be fit but just the average person I really don't hear a lot of conversations about it and I think if you were just more mindful not like going crazy and reading the back of every single thing you put in your mouth but I think if you're just more mindful about how much sugar you're consuming a day it does help your overall health you can always Google how much sugar a day you should be intaking or what the max is. And that doesn't mean you should be hitting the max every day. That is a max. That's a maximum. But that's sort of a safe range. So you can talk to your doctor or figure out online how much you should and shouldn't be consuming. Just to have more information, just to help you live a better, longer, healthier life. So that's where we are you guys thank you so much for watching this video i appreciate your support let me know if you guys have experienced this or if some of the things that i was talking about sort of sounded like you let me know like what did you guys do to help yourself cut back let me know what you guys did i thank you so much for all of your support and your love on my channel i love you guys so much you guys are so wonderful and i appreciate all of your support with everything that i do i will see you guys in the next video big kisses Peace, love, and light.